still wearing the camo shirts, the only fitting clothes for the concerning audiophile and the manliest of men. Hello, Silverback audiophiles, and welcome back to Sternholm Reviews. Have you checked out the Hi-Fi News and Quick Reviews video on the channel yet? I'm looking for feedback, so please do share if you have time to watch the pilot episode. In this video, I'm reviewing the Italian Gold Note DS10 Evo Streaming Deck slash preamp. And boy, what a roller coaster ride that was. Whether it's cars, fashion, food, culture, politics, there's one thing you really can't say about Italians, and that is that they're boring. Italy is a country of huge cultural contrast, ranging from big passion for the finer things in life on one side, and the savage corruption that comes with a powerful mob that ultimately ends up taking away the full potential of a country and all its people, creating this culture of meh, that might find its way into products or reasoning. While we all know world-famous Italian products like Ferrari and Lamborghini and mozzarella... It's mozzarella. If you don't know how to say it, don't say it at all. Capisci? Not to forget countless fashion brands, world-class winemakers and espresso machine builders, Italy is less known worldwide for at least two handful of pretty unique hi-fi manufacturers. Yes, we're talking about brands like Sonus Faber, Singali, Tektron, New Audio Frontiers, and of course, the youngster that is the subject of this review, the company Goldnode. Goldnode was founded in 2012 and has just celebrated its 10 years anniversary. Located in the countryside surrounding Firenze in Tuscany, where both R&D as well as production takes place, the brand covers a lot of ground product-wise with a complete portfolio of products including turntables, speakers, cartridges, amplifiers, cables and more. Many products are offered with improved external power supplies as an option. Why sell one if you can sell two? It's a brand that clearly celebrates both tradition and innovation while also diving into what we could call Italian design with intricate craftsmanship, colors and materials giving the products a nice dose of X-Factor and a unique feel to them. Especially their turntables are great examples of that Italian design flamboyance, if we could call it that. Getting to know these products reveals all the contrast, passion and the quirkiness that Italian products uh, sometimes exhibit. In fact, there's a lot of stuff here to piss you off, depending on how you plan to use such stack. Judging from all the rave reviews, I might be living in a parallel universe or something, so please judge for yourself. For this review, my main focus is uh, the 2790 euro DS10 Evo DAC preamp with and without its external power supply option. I also sample family members represented by the PH10 Phonostate and the PA10 power amplifier to get an idea of how the different components work and sound together and to show you the available finishes side by side. So hang on while we dig deeper than ever, peeling layer after layer of the onion, figuring out if all this is just the review samples were kindly made available to me by Hi-Fi Center Jutland in collaboration with the good people at Danish distributor Inventum. The design of the 10 series is very sleek and modern with an informative display controlled by a single turn and click knob while packaged in a beautiful aluminum chassis that comes in either silver gold or black. Personally, I just love that gold finish, enhancing that Italian flamboyance. The golden note player, that is the trademark of gold note, finishes off the distinct looking design and cool form factor. The size is made so that two components approximately equals a normal size component with some room to spare. The single knob approach can be appreciated in a minimalist sort of way, but 
you quickly find out that this is actually too much hassle to use and turn to the remote. That makes the job a bit easier, but surprisingly still a hassle due to the navigation created for a one-knob design. To me, it's a no-no to ever let a volume button dub as anything else. And I feel this design over function and find myself being frustrated with the one-knob approach again and again during the review period. In short, the software is not smart enough to compensate for many of the shortcomings of the single-knob approach. More on that later. When I really get fired up. The DAC is based on the high-performing AKM AK4493 DAC chipset that is capable of handling audio files up to PCM 32-bit 768 kHz and DSD 512. The DS10 EVO also features LAN, Wi-Fi and the more audiophile-friendly Bluetooth version 5.0. A unique feature is the Chameleon DAC that allows you to adjust the digital filters to your liking. There are only subtle differences, but they will grow in your ears over time and can be worth experimenting with. How well it works really depends on the source material and the sample rate, but nice to have the ability to decide on digital filtering, a subject I cover more in depth on the iFi Audio Streaming DAC review that I link to directly in the description underneath this video. The DS10 EVO line model version, for which you need to pay an additional 200 euros, adds a analog input on a 3.5 mil analog mini jack input. So this is where you would connect your phono stage. Bastards. I find the system as a whole to be a bit inconsistent, both in features and presentation. Design-wise, little things like the LED color scheme not being consistent across devices. Also, things like the GN link that triggers turning on power to the power amp is not implemented in the phono stage, at least not on the unit I got here for review. In daily use, the DS10 deck will act as a control center for your Goal Note system. It has multiple digital inputs, counting two optical, one USB, one coax, and a AES EBU. It also allows you to transmit audio from a device using Bluetooth, and it supports multiple streaming interfaces like Tidal Connect and Spotify Connect, Rune, DNLA servers, local file playback via USB drive, and more. In the GN control app, there's even implemented the possibility to connect to Apple iCloud and Dropbox and Google Drive. Unfortunately, the total user experience make you feel a bit... What's going on here? Oh, damn it! Damn it! And that's all I have to say about that. Because instead of spending the majority of this review going into details about how sad the user experience is using the DS10 Evo and its associated software app, and how much it kills your musical enjoyment in daily life if you try to use these tools that GoldNote provides. I will instead just tell you about the two worst ones and list the rest of the annoyances, bugs, and inconsistencies I found during the review for you to pause and read, even though it <laughs> could have been very entertaining to go full-on old man rant mode on this one. Everybody knows you never go full retard. What do you mean? There's simply too much to cover. So let's pick the design choices that will really torture you, even if you use a third-party solution like Rune for all your streaming. The most frustrating design choice is that the DS10 EVO can't automatically switch on and switch to the network input. Say you want to start playback from the GN app and the DS10 EVO is turned off. In that case, it does not even exist on your network before it switches physically on, and that involves pushing the do everything button and hold it for several seconds wherever you decided to place the DAC and or 
use the remote, of course, that needs line of sight. When finally turned on, the DS10 Evo will appear at some point on your network. If the unit is switched to one of the digital inputs, it doesn't even switch automatically to the network input when the network is being initiated from uh, its own app or Spotify or Tidal, unless you use Rune, which in case it will. After all, a man earns it. Who does? Absolutely. Confused? There's many reasons to be. This is just the tip of the inconsistency iceberg. In the more dangerous category is the crazy design choice that every input retains the last used volume individually. <laughs> Imagine you had a party night with the boys playing at level 90 or full tilt uh, on a player connected to, toss, say, Toslink input 2. When you got tired later that evening, you switch to a streaming some Spotify that one of the guys had on his phone using the network input. Next morning, early up with the family asleep, you turn on the system, switch to Toslink input 2 where the device connected is already playing. <laughs> resulting in screaming loud music playing and your wife filing for divorce. There's absolutely no reason or logic behind this behavior. Why? Why everyone else would operate with a startup level setting or just a global volume for all inputs. Not in this case. Why? Where the DS10 Evo software designer, for whatever reason, has decided that all inputs will retain the last volume they played at. Nine, 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 nine. Even after shutting down the deck. Why? 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 For anybody using several sources, this will be a pain in the butt all the time. No, God, please, no, no! Now grab your popcorns and hit that pause button to read while we take a little break. Come on, guys, that's just too lazy. No! Three different ways. I call them the bad, the good, and the really annoying. Why do we need the first slider? Yes, this is true, people all related to the current software and control app. Come on! So what about the included RR remote? Look, it has transport controls. Maybe there's some light at the end of the tunnel if you can at least skip, you know, tracks in playlists using the remote. But the people are retarded. Do you want me to write that down? Or are you just going to eat the paper? Overall, this is a user experience that will soon having you prefer physical media over streaming. So why should you keep caring for this product? Thankfully, when it comes to the sound, things brighten up quite a bit. El Tribuno. Italiano. The DS10 Evo and its family members offer some very distinct sound. I had not had the opportunity to sample their speakers in conjunction with the 10 series products, but I got the PH10 Phono Stage and the PA10 Hybrid Amplifier that are both very distinct sounding in each their direction. In general terms, there's excitement to the sound of the DS10 Evo. That Italian flamboyance that spices up things and sounds a little forward with a hint of harshness, maybe sometimes. When used with the uh, 1,790 euro PA10 amplifier, this is smoothed out quite a bit, as the PA10 has a pretty laid back and warm sound. Say you have a too forward sounding speaker you want to mellow down a bit, this could be the amp to try. According to Goldnote, it can even be bridged to deliver a impressive 300 watts in 8 ohms 
if you need more headroom than the two time 75 watts it delivers in stereo in eight ohms. The critical listening test was uh, conducted first with the external PSU connected and then without to listen for if anything was missed. In my experience, this is the best way of conducting such a test as the brain is more likely to expect a improvement when something is added. I used the new prime evolution one monoblocks driving the reference uh, SBR1 speakers using the analog Yamaha C5000 as a preamp and ran the DAC in DAC mode giving me a fixed output to the preamplifier. Speaker cables used uh, were the Viablue SC4s. It would be possible to listen by going straight to the mono blocks from the DS10 EVO, but the C5000 is nice to have sitting in between for referencing other DACs during the session. For the blind test, we exclusively use tracks from the Sonic Snacks playlist that you find for your streaming service of choice in the description of the video. The many digital filter options in the DS10 EVO can introduce subtle changes to the overall presentation that will settle in you over time. I played around with the settings without really finding my preferred sweet spot. It kind of changes with sample rates and type of content. When reviewing the iFi Audio Neo Stream, Tim Harris and I conducted this five deck blind test and the DS10 held up very nicely as one of the more exciting sounding decks in the bunch. We were surprised that the difference between them were really not bigger with the DS10 Evo coming through with a smidge more excitement that for some will be translated um, to more edge with some music. It could start to feel a bit distracting and with other music right on the sweet spot. So if the Italian sound will be advantage or not, it's really up to the rest of your system and musical taste, to be honest. You can say it comes packed with some extra spice, <laughs> that is for sure. Using the optional specialized PSU is cool, but it only revealed a subtle degradation on my reference system when removed. It feels like the sound imaging becomes a little bit less settled, less calm. Here on this particular system, the improvement is very subtle. I found the DS10 EVO performing amazingly well with DSD files delivered by Rune. I got totally soaked in in a listening session filled with music, forgetting all about crappy software annoyances that Rune basically liberates you from. And in Instead, I had a blast even forgetting to have lunch that day, being in the room with artists like Kenny Burrell on the album The Road to Love, Jacinta on her tribute to Ben Webster called Here's to Ben, that by the way is an audiophile golden nugget of intimate laid-back jazz that led me to the crazy good one mic recording by Franz Lirond of Carmen uh, Gomes Incorporated with the album don't You Cry, that is a masterpiece in perfect natural sound being impressively delivered by the DS10 EVO. Later in the session, I also enjoyed DSD cuts from Bob Dylan, where especially Shelter from the Storm from the Blood on the Tracks album was portrayed very intimate and airy. In the more funky and groovy department, my Ears was caressed by the amazing Vanessa Fernandez with the help of legendary engineer Michael C. Ross on the album Use Me. That is a wonderful example of skilled contemporary analog recording as the album is recorded to 24 analog and mixed to a quarter inch master tape, carefully mastered and transferred to high resolution DSD by Bernie Grundman. If you haven't heard it, it's really an album worth checking out. It has such wonderful studio ambience, dynamics, smoothness, depth. And when played back in high resolution, it really feels like a very clear window to the studio. Ending off uh, the high-res listening session, I turned to the crazy good 2L recording with the choir Cantus, performing a new uh, composition called P cell 9 composed by Maya Mikarov that is just 
after the convincing musical performance using DSD and very high resolution PCM content, I turn to the new little permanent inhabitant, the Project CD Box RS 2G CD Transport, to play a number of favorite CDs that got a wonderful lift in vibrancy and resolution when compared with direct playback from my premium CD player reference from Marantz. During the session, I'm also listening to the headphone output using a pair of Sennheiser HD 820s that was easily driven by the DS10 in the low setting, comparing them to the built-in headphone amp residing in the C5000 preamp that revealed a very different sound between the two. The DS10 comes across as punchier and more weighty, but also a bit nasal sounding on the headphone output on the 820s, while the C5000 seems more detailed, more airy, Mm, bit more separation. What is the right sound for you really depends on the listening preference and musical taste. I could not decide myself what I like the best when listening to Michelle Shocked on the quality of Mercy from the Dead Man Walking soundtrack. I love the bass on the DS10, but I love the mid-range detailing and resolution more on the C5000 headphone amp. On that, Gold note, it's time to drop a conclusion, taking the price and the unfulfilled promises of the DS10 EVO into account. If the DS10 EVO was a woman, she would be the most beautiful woman in a gold silk gown, in full makeup, on high heels, ready to get her picture taken in the perfect sunset. But at the same time, she has a tendency to mess with all your records while eating ice cream with fingers covered in caramel. And can't cook for shit. In short, far too much time goes from the musical experience and the impulse of wanting to hear something when you have a product that does not accommodate you intelligently. While the DS10 Evo is a good looking idea and has a distinct sound to offer your ears, I find it so hard to live with that I would not recommend it to anyone who wants to explore multiple sources of music. You really have to know and manage all its quirks, some of which, like the volume being retained for each input, are directly insane. No! Even if this was the best sounding, best sound value streaming deck proposition in the world, many users would still not be able to love it due to a really poco brillante user experience. The good thing is that it can be addressed with future updates, which I hope Goldnode will provide once they figure out the internal problem that has caused such mess to ever get out of the factory. I would for sure love to have a DS10 EVO with a matching PSU, both in gold finish sitting here on my rack with the great looks in mind, but not with this software behavior. Life is simply too short for that. Hang on for the pros, the cons, and the review score, and tap, tap, tap that like and subscribe buttons if you want more content like this. Have you checked out the Sternholm Hi-Fi News and Quick Reviews pilot yet? I would love to know if it's a format you would like to see more of. Please check it out and let me know what's wrong with it. Link in the description and on the video end card.